it's very near the um, uh, the Belgian border and very close to uh, Germany, very close to Auckland. I cannot remember much about Normandy, excepting it was close to a huge cemetery that we had just opened up for the newly fallen because the fighting had become very intense around the Auckland area. And so there were acres of land that um, had been dug up, you know, for these individual graves. It was a sad thing to go through. Mm -hmm. Well, then I see we get, we're back in France again at Metz, the Protestant church there. Yes. Well, there were th three places I picked up uh, a glass there, and I think they're all jumbled together. Some from the cathedral, some from an evangelical church, some from um, an army chapel, uh, which I guess was sort of non-sectarian. Um, Metz was a trial for General Patton. It's the first time he ever was foiled by the Germans. He, um, he did manage to surround the city. He managed to grab the bridges <coughs> over the Moselle River. But there, there were um, five important forts inside the city. Hmm that had been very heavily fortified. The Germans held out in those ports for weeks after we had occupied the rest of the city. Hmm. They had a certain amount of ammunition, but for their own defense, they only used it very sparingly. But every once in a while, they, they'd shoot something into the city. Mm -hmm. hoping to get one of our forces. Was that the place where there had been so many Nazi sympathizers also? That, uh... Well, uh, yes, the, um, <coughs> the Germans had held it from 1870 until 1918, mm -hmm. 1920 you might mm -hmm. say. And, uh, so they, they brought in a great many of their own people. Mm -hmm. well, crossing into Belgium, I see that uh, you were at Malmedy. Yes, yes. I have a little memory of Malmedy, except thing I did pick up was... Mm -hmm. uh, and then on to Dinan? Dinan, yes. Now, Dinon, th this was important for, for several reasons. I got a little glass from the church there, which is, is unique. It's rather a, 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 a shortened church, and it has a big, tall steeple. And on top of the steeple, there's one of these umbrella bell-like towers, mm -hmm. which it is said the Crusaders observed in mosques in the Holy Land and came back and introduced to Europe. So mm -hmm. you see them very frequently mm -hmm. in Bavaria. But it's rare to see one this far north in, in Belgium. Mm -hmm. Now, in World War I, this will illustrate what was happening in Europe. Um, the Germans quickly took Dinan. But then they did a terrible thing, a really terrible thing, because one of their own troops had been attacked by, a, I suppose, a very patriotic Belgian who shot him or whatever. They herded 612 men, women, and children into the square just in front of the church and shot them all. <laughs> Bayoneted those who were survived. That was never forgotten. 
Now, during the Battle of the Bulge, Dinan was the point that the Germans hoped to get to. Mm -hmm. They didn't. They just failed to get there. But I found just a little glass there and mm -hmm. picked it up. How about Saint Hubert then? Was that the same Saint Hubert time? is near the Bulge. Um, I went there when it was entirely undisturbed. I don't believe it was disturbed. But oh, it's such a beautiful church. It, um, can you get that? Uh, do you want to get it? Well, that is handsome, isn't it? Yes. Now, it's interesting to note that in okay. so many badly. Okay, you got that. Badly uh, uh, destroyed towns. It was the medieval buildings that stood up the best. Hmm. You know, that is curious, isn't it? Mm -hmm. They certainly knew how to build in the Middle Ages. Um, but San Hubert is mainly a shrine church. And uh, it had suffered some damage, so that there were yes, fragments I, available. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, then on to a famous name, Bastogne itself. Eh? Yes. This, of course, is the heart of the Battle of the Bulge. Mm. Um, Bastogne is what they call a car floor, where uh, four roads joined together. And the Germans needed it very badly for their onward thrust towards the Lewis River. Um, and of course, um, we had a general who was put there, and they demanded that he surrender. He simply wrote the word nuts <laughs> on the demand to surrender, which puzzled the, the German officers. When he read it, he didn't know what to make of it. <laughs> but. Um, uh, it was besieged, it was surrounded, mm -hmm. and on Christmas Day, uh, General Patton succeeded in breaking the siege and got our troops in the best storm. Mm -hmm. From that moment on, the Germans began their, their, their onward push lesson, and they began slowly their retreat. Mm -hmm. Is that where they used the church to care for the wounded? Or the yes, yes. I, I went there about two weeks later, and uh, I, it, it was cold. There was snow everywhere, and uh, no electricity, of course. And the, the, the only fires you saw were these big gas drums, you know, which were used as a center for building a fire. Mm -hmm. You went into the church, and there were, were um, sort of litters about. Mm -hmm. Well, also suffering in the Battle of the Bulge was the other nearby place of Tionville, wasn't it? Tionville. Tionville is halfway between Strasbourg and uh, Luxembourg. And uh, I, I think it was on his thrust northward to shore up the southern edge of the bulge that General Patton passed through uh, Tionville. I had gone through it earlier when it was just a quiet little French town. Um, it, it, passing through the time when I picked up a little glass, it had been hit heavily, and uh, so I didn't stop for mm -hmm. any more than to crawl up to where the church was. Mm -hmm. The next one is Vive, and I remember you're telling us once about an unusual experience you had there. Uh, Verviere, yes. I suppose I was going to one of the mobile radio battalions that we had so much of, and uh, to make a visitation to, to this particular one. And they had a billeting officer who, who put me, which was the custom then, in a private home. 
had it been a German home, we just would have ordered the occupants out. We would have taken it ourselves. Mm -hmm. But these were friendly people, you see. So they were invited to make their rooms available for a price, which the army paid. Um, and so I went to this civilian family. I only remember there being a woman in the house. And she put me in a room which belonged to her son. And he had been picked up off the streets of Verrières and taken to Germany as a slave laborer. Mm. But here I was, sleeping in his bed and seeing his books, his school books, his uh, pictures of his friends on the, on the bureau and uh, 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 sports people that he thought a lot of. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it was, it just touched you again with what war does mm -hmm. when it moves through an area. What would her attitude been at that time? Did they welcome the American troops coming in? Oh, yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. um, after, after the first greetings, which tended to be, of course, very warm, very shallow, um, uh, people from that moment on were thinking about how they are going to survive themselves. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think she was glad to have a little help from the American mm -hmm. army. Well, next we come to a big one, the first German city to fall to our forces, Aachen. Aachen, yes, indeed. Yes. I, uh, it, it, it was the first, and it was the first because it was such a big city, uh, such a strange thing to go into a city where there aren't any roofs. Hmm. The roofs are all gone. And... Uh, of course, there was a lot of rubble, and uh, uh, I came up over a hill, and the first thing I saw was a trolley car that had been damaged. It was just left sitting on its tracks. It, 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 I suppose it had been there for, for weeks, maybe, and ju you just knew nobody was going to come and fix it up. It, uh, and then there was a, a newly built Roman Catholic church right alongside the Church of the Holy Ghost. And I got some glass from there. Then we drove down to the very center of the city where there's the great cathedral where Charlemagne's body was buried. And I got a little glass there. Charlemagne, of course, I think we might say it was the first European because he, he reached across to various tribes, to the Burgundians, the Huns, the, 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 a variety of tribes, united them under himself mm -hmm. and made Aachen really the first capital of Europe. Mm. And uh, but his body had been secreted away from the cathedral. Was it returned then after the war? Or? After the war it was. But he, Charlemagne was regarded all over Europe as a saint because he had brought peace to Europe, a kind of peace, mm -hmm. and had established the Holy Roman Empire. Um, but his body was hidden away, and at the end of the war, the transportation officer in the Ockham area told a, a, a colored truck driver to go out and bring the body back. And he, now in, in any other age, there would have been a great procession, you know. Kings and princes would have walked with the <laughs> cortege. You know. But this, <laughs> this eager driver just went and got it, put it in the truck, came back and said, here's the corpse, what do I do with it? <laughs> well, on your way to Cologne, I see you visit that 
old Roman city of uh, Trier. Trier, yes, one of the most important historic cities in all of Europe. Um, I drove over a, a Roman bridge that had been built in Roman days, and which I think the Germans just couldn't bring themselves to destroy, <laughs> and we mercifully didn't. And uh, into the city, which was one great pile of rubble. Strangely enough, there was a great gate to the old Roman city called the Black Gate, the Porta Nigra. And uh, that was intact. Hmm. It had lasted from Roman days, but nearly everything else in the uh, uh, area had been uh, uh, just blasted. Mm -hmm. And uh, we drove through a, a narrow, uh, on a narrow lane that had been clear and rubbish mm -hmm. piled up on either side uh, until I got to the Liebfrau Kirke. Now, the Liebfrau Kirke, which means the Church of Our Beloved Lady, um, was um, one of those perfect Gothic churches, just like the, the photograph you saw of San Hubert. Mm -hmm. Now, I must show you. This is much too small for you. That shows the interior ruin. Uh, th this shows um, uh, myself inside the church. Ooh, let's get that one. And um, you can see the windows there are all shattered. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is looking towards the altar. The communion rail is to the fore, and, and uh, it, it was such a saddening thing to see because, uh, of course, it was the house of the Lord, and here is the Lord who was tumbled mm. from his place on the rude beam and is lying flat on the floor. Is that you in the picture? Yes, it is. Well, can we get a good one of that, John? Yep. Yeah. And, uh, then there, I have another picture here of the Madonna, the Liebfrau herself. Um, she is tumbled from her perch, but um, she has such a sad expression on her face. Well, I, as you know, I can never find anything that I'm looking for. So I guess we'll have to go. Well, that brings us then to the famous uh, Cologne Cathedral, the one that was really a, yes. a miracle. It's just, it was left standing in the middle of that terribly yes. uh, damaged city. They, uh, yes, it was a city. It was, if Aachen was the first large city captured by the Allied side, Cologne was the first huge German city to be bombed in a massive way. I think it was in February of 1942 that 1,000 English bombers attacked Cologne. And they, it, it was the, the worst attack that the city ever had. A lot of incendiaries were involved. Incendiaries were, were in, in with the bombs. And so the, the result was that the, the center of the city was, was turned into rubble and uh, fire smoked. Mm -hmm. uh, 
understand you, but lone standing in the midst of all this debris was the cathedral, this cathedral that had been built. It's important to say, I think in the 13th century and in the 19th century, it, it, it was never completed until the 19th century hmm. when the Hohenzollerns, wanting to attach the Catholics of Germany more tightly to themselves, built the western facade of Cologne Cathedral. But here it was, it stood in the center of the city, um, you might say a baked cathedral. Uh, because of the terrible heat that it hit it all. Mm -hmm. But the walls stood. Once again, you have to admire those builders of the Middle Ages mm -hmm. who, who could build something to withstand what the 20th century put against them. <laughs> is it a typical Gothic cathedral with the flying buttresses? And yes, all it the is, yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yes. Magnificent. Well, I see your itinerary takes you on to Wiesbaden then in the Church of St. Augustine. Yes. Now this is, um, <clears throat> this is just a few weeks later. Um, it, it was planned long in advance that, that General Bradley's higher headquarters would move to this spa city of the Germans which is a place where the rich Germans went to drink the waters and be healed of their various illnesses. Mm -hmm. And, uh, mm -hmm. but the, the British spoiled that <coughs> because <coughs> on the night of February 1st, 2nd, 1945, you see, um, they, they made an attack on Wiesbaden which really was not a military objective, excepting that a great many troops being relieved from fighting on the front were there for a period of rest. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> and one third of the city disappeared in 20 minutes of bombing. Now, uh, these bombs somewhat like Washington, D.C., with its beltway, had one big road encircling the city. And there must have been seven or eight very prominent churches spread at different points around this ring road. And they were all hit and badly damaged, excepting one, the Bergkirche, which we later on used for some No, we didn't use it. But <laughs> I was looking up an Anglican church there. I thought, now we'll have one of our own churches we can use. Mm -hmm. So I went with an, with an engineer officer to, to look at it. And we saw <clears throat> that the front was all boarded up. But we were able to go through the tower entrance uh, pushing a doorway to one side, and we found lots of debris inside, and the engineer said, Chaplain, put your helmet back on your head, because the roof may fall on us any mm. minute, or something from the roof. Mm -hmm. And so we couldn't use it. Instead, I used the casino, which was the biggest building in the city or for miles around. A huge affair. And I used the symphony hall for our main services. Mm -hmm. But for smaller services, I used the reading room. Mm -hmm. And uh, <clears throat> I don't know if it's necessary to tell you this, but I, I will because you know, it was curious. The clergyman is supposed to preach you expected to direct your mind to, to higher things. But I hadn't figured that the higher things were up there in the roof of this reading room. 
and they were the goddesses of ancient Greece, <laughs> practically unclothed. So while I was trying to fix my eyes in the congregation, the congregation was looking up. <laughs> Is that where the Russian chapel was also? In the yes, place? yes. Uh, a, a very touching thing. One bomb fell nearby it and damaged the house of the priest, a, an aged Russian priest. I went to it, and because I've always liked the Orthodox, particularly attracted to them, and because um, uh, I like the Orthodox liturgy and such. I called at the house and found out that the poor old man was in the hospital. And so I went down and called on him. And the instance I introduced myself to him, he said, You've seen me before. Well, I, of course, was astonished. And uh, he said, Yes, you've seen my picture in the newspapers. And he was right. Hmm. He was a great friend of the, the royalty in Bulgaria. Mm -hmm. And he had, he had flown to Detroit, to an Orthodox church in Detroit, to solemnize the marriage of Princess Kira, connected with the Romanov family, hmm. to a grandson of Kaiser Wilhelm II. Mm. So he was right. <laughs> I had seen him before. Fred, how do you remember all these names and people and places? That's phenomenal. It really is. Well, <coughs> these were interesting things, I thought. Mm -hmm. So you do remember what you think is interesting. I guess so. Well, we're getting almost through Germany, but I see a Frankfurt. Is it next? Frankfurt, yes. The... Um, Frankfurt, of course, is very badly bombed, but the cathedral itself didn't seem to be so badly bombed. I walked in, everything was silent as things usually were at that time. Um, there weren't things for people to do, but I did find a sexton, a, a janitor in the cathedral, and he took me into the sacristy and asked me if I would like to see the scalp of St. Bartholomew. <laughs> well, naturally, I had a certain curiosity. <laughs> I'd never even seen any one of the Twelve Apostles. Yeah. Here was a chance, so I said <laughs> yes. He went to a drawer and pulled it out, and all I can tell you is if that really was the scalp of St. Bartholomew, he had a very heavy head of yellowish gray hair. <laughs> Nuremberg. Nuremberg. One of the choice churches of the Middle Ages is the Church of St. Sebald, which is up near the castle at uh, Nuremberg. And uh, at Harvard University in the chapter school, we used to have a service of communion every morning before um, a, a replica of the wall behind the altar at St. Sebald mm -hmm. in Barnburg. And so here I was able to see the real thing. Mm -hmm. It was not too badly damaged, I have to say. Well, that pretty well finishes Germany. I see here that uh, you did uh, have an opportunity to collect some fragments back in London again, uh, St. John's and Red Lion Square. Yes. Um, uh, this was a church very much loved by uh, a number of people. Uh, it, uh, the British when they began their colonizing, tried to keep in touch through their, their church with people at home and people abroad. And this church had a very close connection with a church in Vancouver, B.C. that I knew very well. 
So I was attached to it. And in 1933, when I was in London, I went there every morning for communion. And uh, so I was very much saddened when I got to London and looked up Red Lion Square and saw that all was just ruined mm. in that part of London. And I got a little of it last mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. I see that you also got some fragments in uh, Biarritz at the St. Andrews English Church there. Yes. Uh, this puzzled me a little bit because St. Andrew's Church was in such shape we were not able to use it for services when I was down there after the war was over. Um, but ab about a year earlier, let's say 1943, uh, an attack had been made at saint jean de Duce which is very close to Spain. I think the British were trying to intimidate Franco to keep him from uh, joining up with Hitler. Mm -hmm. And uh, some one of their bombs must have fallen on Biarritz because St. Andrew's Church was, was damaged. Mm -hmm. So hence I got a little class there. Mm -hmm. Well, that brings us just about to the end, Fred. Uh, one of the most famous of all, uh, Hitler's Berghaus at Birch's Garden. Yes. Well, this wasn't stained glass. This was glass that was smoked glass mm -hmm. from bombs that had been dropped nearby. Uh, the bombs had not done a great deal of damage to Hitler's house itself, mm -hmm. which is called the Berghof. It, um, the, uh, uh, it was overrun by French troops who simply cleaned out everything from the house. Hmm. Well, that was their right in yeah. a sense. Uh, uh, but there wasn't anything left after they'd gone, uh, excepting these, these little shards of glass. I remember going up the famous steps up which we had seen uh, the uh, the president of Austria go, you know, to mm -hmm. to be uh, to face Hitler's demands, or to see Neville Chamberlain walk, mm -hmm. uh, walking up. And then you walk mm -hmm. into a great big room with a huge picture window, and then you walk through this room, and at the far end, uh, you went into sort of a narrow area where there was um, a flight of stairs going up and then kind of a corridor. And it was in that area that I picked up this mm -hmm. glass. Um, I don't know why we should have it in all, with all this other glass that was in consecrated churches, well, excepting hand, that it does have a relevance. It certainly does. It I was think because of this fellow Mm -hmm. that all of the rest of it happened. And the mystery of what it was that was in Adolf Hitler continues to puzzle and baffle mm -hmm. me. And it's going to be a long time mm -hmm. while people are going to be talking about right. this. Well, I think it's a fitting end to the whole journey and the whole story. I'd like to see uh, my favorite picture of you from those times get on camera here. Can you show us this uh, photograph up close with you and your the chaplain's helmet. outfit and the helmet and the cross? And I think I take it upstairs. Captain's bars and on the wall. You'll do that upstairs. Good. Yes, yes. Well, Fred, yeah, I'd like to bring you after a, a long trip in the jeep. Well, this has been a wonderful experience for me, certainly, and uh, I think everyone that sees this is going to really appreciate this uh, and uh, realize what you did to make this unique collection and. Uh, your remarkable memory and personality in being able to recall all this for us. Thank you, Bill. Thank you for coaxing me along. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here is a picture of Fred MacDonald in, in, taken in the year 1944 while in Europe. 